Hey there, everyone. So we just got done uh, with our work for today on the uh, valves of the Todd engine. Um, so we got one of them done. So this exhaust valve is finished. And uh, did the, about, I think, three cuts and then a finished cut. And it turned out to be about 300 thousandths over 14 inch is where it cleaned up at. And then we had enough time to go to the other end here and make a uh, make an initial cut back here and it took a little bit more on that end uh, where it wasn't worn very much and then you can see in the back here it didn't even touch there and it didn't touch right there and that's that's right where the uh, the rings would wear anyways and being this far back um, you know probably didn't get a lot of lubrication back here either so uh, so tomorrow we will finish up with this um, and uh, <clears throat> then take this entire rig and move it up to the um, steam valves and do the same thing there. Now they're not going to require nearly as much, I don't think, um, because they're not as, uh, as worn out, but we do have that one little area uh, you can barely see it down there and to the left that um, there must have been a ring that broke at some point and it just started chewing away at that, that surface. So we'll have to go enough to hopefully uh, take care of that. Uh, and if not, oh well, um, it'll be as good as we can get it. So in order to get in there tomorrow, uh, basically you have to poke your head down through the top to uh, adjust that center bearing. So we had to take the throttle valves off. So uh, since we got the throttle valves off, uh, we'll come over here and take a look at them and uh, show you what they are. So this one here on the right is, uh, is the main throttle valve. This is made by the William Todd Company. Looks very similar to the piston valves on the inside. Uh, there is the cage and then there is a spool that fits inside. And then you open the valve, it just you know opens up that that uh, surface a little at a time and lets more steam into the uh, into the valve chest. So rather simple in design. There is a um, vertical shaft with a hand wheel that sits on a pedestal. Um, and uh, when you're ready to run the engine, you open it up. And um, Generally, when this was running in the mill, you'd open it up all the way, and then it would it would run up onto the governor, and the governor would control the speed. But you can also use the throttle to control speed too. Then this other device back here is an emergency stop valve that was made by the the Schutte and Curting Company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number two one six one seven and. They're still in business, but I'm sure if you contacted them, they'd be like, what? Huh? What's that? We never made any of those. <laughs> I have no idea what they do. They still do something in, in fluids engineering, but uh, certainly I don't think making steam engine stop valves anymore. So this is how this thing works. You have a... Um, electromagnet up here and it says right on it 260 volts 950 ohms um, that's very useful for uh, rewinding that so when the engine is in operating condition you would have 250 volt DC in a circuit that would run through a bunch of disconnect switches emergency stop buttons and overspeed there's a fly ball overspeed uh, device and then over to this coil and the coil would be energized and then this weight would be up against it and as long as that electricity is flowing and everybody is happy and it's not over speeding and no one is hitting the emergency stop button this weight stays up here but should something happen and it lose its electrical um, its power supply then it falls and trips and when it trips it hits this uh, and then when that trips this this arm will then move forward by steam pressure from inside 
and then when it moves forward, it will shut the valve, and that will that will stop steam going to the engine. And then there's also another way that uh, there was a chain that came from a little arm here that went up and around this and hung down. And so if you wanted to stop it manually, you pull the chain, did the same thing, would lift that up. And then if you wanted to reset it, you had another chain here and this pulley, and you turn this pulley, and then that would come back up. Of course, if you have your power uh, restored to the magnet, bring it up there, and then it would stay there. And then you could, this would come back down, and then this would stay up there, and everybody would be happy, and then you could roll steel. But then if this would drop, shut everything down. Very simple device. We're going to get it working again. Uh, this will be the main safety device for when we're running the engine on steam. Um, so it will be functional and we'll be able to shut the steam off to the engine. Um, and uh, oh, so there was one other thing. So when we're back in the, in the uh, mill over at North Star Steel in 1996, the fall or winter of 1996, tearing this thing apart. And I'm in there working on the engine by myself one day, and some guy drives in in a, in a van, some older fellow drives in the building in a van, gets out, walks up to me, and, and asks, and says, hey, you know, so I saw you on the news that you were saving this engine, and, uh, well, I've got something for you. He says that, well, back when 1979, when the plant shut down, and just before our last day, I walked around the plant looking for souvenirs to take home with me and found, I can find them right here, and he pulled these out of his pocket and they were wrapped up in a paper towel. And these are these are what would hang on the ends of the chains down here. The, uh, to reset magnet weight, so that one would go on this chain on this side, then the hand trip pull would hang off the chain that came around here and hung down. Now I had no idea that these things even existed, but and whoever that fellow was, I have no idea, but he made a special trip over there, somehow talked his way past the guard to get into the plant to come back to give me those. And so someday those will of course go back on the engine. And uh, whoever you are that gave these to us, 30 years later, I'm still very appreciative that you did that. Um, so I'll go back in the cabinet until the day that we can put those back up on the engine. <laughs> um, Let's see, what else we got going on here? Because this is not it. We got more stuff going on. Aha, all right, let's go outside. Well, no, actually, let's go over here. Got to tell the story, got to tell the story right. Okay, so. Move some stuff out of the way. So on this side, on the, on the low pressure side, you see this oil pan sitting there. And that oil pan will get grouted in when we grout in the rest of the bed plate. Um, and basically what it did was that any of the oils that would drop off the two eccentrics would land in there, and then the oil would run back to the sump and then go back to the filter respected oil system. All right, all well and good. This side had the same thing. It was bolted there, rested up on the concrete. Of course, the concrete will be here next spring. Um, and it had a depression in it because the um, governor wheel is eight foot in diameter and so it extends down in a little bit so they they had a depression well when they put that pan in back in 1913 they forgot to grout be underneath the pan between the pan and the concrete foundation and there was a little bit of a gap well at some point in this engine's life they either tried to jack something up against that pan or, or took the governor wheel apart and dropped the lower half down onto it and broke it. And broke it in about three or four different places. There was a huge crack running down through it. 
And I thought for quite a while about, you know, welding that up or, you know, fixing it, stitch, stitch welding, whatever. And I was like, well, you know what? I mean, this is a big rectangular thing with square corners. I mean, we could easily fabricate one out of steel someday as a weldment. And uh, so, fortunately, I had the drawing, the Todd drawing that showed it. And I had our uh, drafter, Adam, work on making a new drawing. So that's taken from the, the Todd drawing. That's what it looks like. And this is redesigned as a weldment. And then I started walking around the site here, hoping that we'd have some steel. So I wouldn't have to actually go out and buy any steel to make this. And then realize that, yeah, we had this welding table made out of one inch plate that came from you guessed it there is the there's the base plate for that uh, oil pan so all we got to do is come in here and cut that section is going to be a depression out drop it down six inches put the plates in on either side there's an, and then there's the uh, edge plates that go all the way around here and there we have it now we can save us a bundle of money by not having to buy a four foot by eight foot by one inch thick piece of plate so i brought this down i'm going to cut all that steel off of there and get to work on uh getting this uh kit of parts put together i'm going to have someone else who's a much better welding than i am to uh actually weld the thing together but i'll get i'll get all the parts and make a you know a giant oil pan ikea kit i guess <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's about all we have going on, about three simultaneous projects at any one time. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, this, uh, oh, so one other, yeah, okay, four simultaneous projects at the same time. <laughs> We're going to get started on, uh, the grouting on the low pressure side, and, and I figured out that the way that this is all put together, that there's like four distinct locations that I can grout, you know, that, that we can grout and not have to do the whole thing at one time because there's either fins or you know, like this piece down here is separate and then the back part of the bed plate separate from the middle section of the separate from the front part there. Uh, so um, probably going to just buy couple pallets of grout rent mixer and then have a giant grout mixing party one weekend and wear everyone out and grout this thing in <laughs> so hopefully within the next three or three to four weeks get that done uh, before the weather turns cold so all right everyone we'll be back at it again at 8 a.m tomorrow morning to do some more work on the piston valves and with the goal of getting that boring machine out of here and off the clock as fast as we can so all right everyone take care